Today, I'm going to teach you how to paint bone. Right guys, so yeah, as I said before, I'm going to show you how to paint bone. Very simply, that's not going to take a massive amount of time. I'm going to be painting the bone on this Lord Reticulator. As you can see, there's some nice bit of bone detail here, you know. The bone, I'm going to show you, will eventually look like this. As you can see, it's a nice way of doing bone. It's not too over the top, and it's quite good for tabletop quality. Again, the skull is uh, the waist. I don't know what you'd call that, like a waistband kind of thing. That skull's done exactly the same way. And they both look real nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that in two simple, well, two to three simple steps, depending on how you want to uh, make your bone look. You can stop at stage, the end of stage two. That works fine. But if you want to increase it, add a bit more colour and highlight, you'll need, need a step three. Again, a very, very simple process. So I'm going to set all this up, and then I'll show you the start from step one. Where it goes. So for step one, what we're going to do is going to get a base colour of your shabti bone down on all the pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to go all over on this skeleton. We're going to hit up the skulls on the side. We're also going to hit these skulls in the back. So what I will do is I will carry on with this. Get a good base coat all over this particular skeleton and the skulls and I shall show you what it looks like when it's fully done and all up on the base coat. So there you go, that's the base coat done. You want to make sure you've got an even base coat for out because you don't want it looking patchy once you start to add you know your shades and if you want to go that one step that you know bigger your highlights. So now we're going to add the shade now, the shade I'm using is going to be Agrax Shade. You know, any dark brown shade will work. I suppose you could usually use a, a light brown, so like a, a Seraphin Sepia, or like a Soft Tone from Army Painter. Um, would have the same, you know, effect for this. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to wash the area get a good, good bit on the brush. You don't want to pull the area too much because you want to keep some of the, uh, you want to, don't want to swim the details in this wash, otherwise you will lose a lot, a lot of it. As you can see, even as we're just going around putting that little bit of wash in, it's adding to that bit of the effect that you want for your your skulls your bones I wouldn't specifically do this for um, teeth teeth you want so much a little bit more whiter again everyone's prefer you know personal preference for me in minis that you're gonna want a little bit more wire, just due to the fact it helps to differentiate, especially if you've got something like this that's going to have, say you've got bone and you're going to have teeth on a model, you want to be able to, to separate it really well so that you know, you know it looks different, not so much the same all over. So we're just coming up to the end of the skeleton, just making sure I get around all the areas, get into all the recesses. Not leaving anything out, and as you can see, that's already brought up that you know that whole skeleton out. So we're going to move on to the skull. In my personal opinion, the skulls look lovely once they're done like this. I mean, in all honesty, I like how a simple technique technique like this helps a skull to look exceptional. And if you can execute it exactly the same every single time, you're going to get a good effect. It's going to look nice, especially with um, 
say you're doing uh, a group of skeletons, if you can pull off the same look throughout on all of your skulls, and all your bone and stuff like that, it's going to look really, really good. So what we're doing now, as I said before, we're just making sure we get everything a good coat, but not too thick because we don't want to lose detail, but we want to separate that bone from everything else. If you do get too much on, not to worry, you can literally just wipe off the excess of the shade off your brush and just with a clean brush, a little bit damp, get a bit of water and just you're going to basically feather it out, which just takes away that shade or that build up a shade. So you aren't going to have it looking, you know, too stark, too dark, and it's not going to be smothering any details. The only thing you have to be careful with is pooling, as where you're going to be putting this as a stand-in, so we stood like that. The shade is slowly going to drop downwards. So my advice for this would be, if you can get all the shade in the areas that you want, and then, if it's possible, to try and lie it down. What I found works, especially with, like, with this one where you've got the skulls underneath, if you simply lie it down but then put something for it to lie on, it's not touching anything, you're not going to lose any details. So that's the wash stage done. So what I'll do is, I'll let that dry, I'll come back, it shouldn't take more than about 20 to 30 minutes. And after that, I'll show you the highlight stage. But as I said before, this is fine as it is. So I'll let it dry and I'll be right back. Right then, so now that the shade is dry, we're gonna to go to stage three. You can leave it at this, as you can see. You know, imagine this with the rest of the detail that you're gonna be painting, this can you know, surpass as being okay for skulls and the bone work and everything. But if you want to take it a step further, I'm going to show you how. And what this is, is just simply, we're going to do edge highlighting and then after we're going to add a little bit of a glaze. So first off, we're going to go back to the Ushabti bone. You're not going to need much because you're going to need a little bit for the edge highlighting. We're going to use a flow aid or a lamin medium or something like that just to make sure that it's flowing nicely and you're not going to break out the pigments. The, uh, the stuff I use is a homemade version of lamin medium, which works well. So we're just going to get the excess off the brush. Let's get the camera in here. I'll show you. Oops. Show you how we do this. So first off, you want to, as in, say, if you're going to do the edge height in for skin, you just want to get the brightest of areas. Just get a nice layer on them, and then also with the eye sockets, just go up over the brow and there. Over eye, exactly the same method. And on there, and then just a little bit on the nose. So there you go. That brings out, as you can see, the little bit of definition you want in that skull. Now, when I'm going to go over with all of this hedge height learn, and then I'll come back with the glazing part of this step. Okay, so what I've done, I've gone around, as I said I would, I've gone around and done all the the uh, rest of the skulls, the way I'd said. A bit different for the big skeleton. I've dry brushed that instead, it adds quite a nice effect as well. So you can see I've highlighted up everything. The one we're going to glaze is this one on the edge. Now with the glazing, it's pretty much what you do with the edge highlight and you want to bring up that step. As with all your paints, you're going to want to water them down. And so now, you're going to grab your paint and you're going to water it down to like a glaze consistency. Now the best way to check <clears throat> for a glaze consistency is if you get your nail, run a brush across, if it goes translucent, 
it means that you've got you know a good basis for it. So let's get a good lock on this. So now what you want to do is you're going to start from the bottom and you're going to drag upwards. And what this is going to do is going to bring that brightest of colour up to the top, but still giving it a little bit of colour at the bottom. A little bit more medium in that. And what we're doing is just dragging this glaze up to the point where we would expect a light. Now, looks a bit of a state now, very stark everything, but this will dampen down colour wise. So, as you can see, the detail now on these skulls are simple. Now, this is using just simply three techniques on how to get your bone to a tabletop standard very, very quickly. Just hit up a little bit on the top of that one. A little bit there. There we go. So as you can see, the bone does look nice. Now obviously you're seeing it as just the bone at the moment. But this is using the same technique that was used for that little fella down in the corner, you know? So you'll get that effect in the long run and it looks good with the rest of the model so I hope that was of use to someone you know for painters that are just starting out and yeah hopefully you get a good you get as good enough as a result as what I have done here so if you like this video please like it and subscribe to the channel you know this is a brilliant <clears throat> Sorry about that. Where was I? Oh, yeah, so basically, yeah, like the channel, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, bye.